Welcome to the podcast. Hi. I mean, mixed emotions yeah. in relation to the podcast today. Heavy it's, heart. It's a very exciting time mm. of the year. Coming into Christmas, so much to look forward to. Mm. Um, but as far as the show goes, it yeah. is the end of an era. For uh, one team member. His name's Matt DeGruel. Am I going? Am I out? No. Well, you're... Oh, when are you going? Don't you leave on Sorry, a Friday? Every a... Friday, so I thought I could go today, guys. No, it's not about you. Oh, you can't okay. go today. How's your and new... we certainly wouldn't be doing a farewell of this <laughs> oh, extravagance. Oh, no, we would I mean, who would cut it together? How is your career as a Jeffrey Rush impersonator going? Yeah, really bad. Not bad? Yeah. It's going really well. Um, MDG is leaving. Uh, that's sad. Uh, Kate, you're probably not across this, but you know he was known as the avocado man for a long time. Why? Uh, I was a very... I don't want to go into too much detail. Because of his I, head? No, no. He, that's why he's the thumb, the human thumb, because if you look at sort of the rolls on the back of his neck where he just had an abscess cut out, you'll see that he's... Um, he looks like a thumb. Thumb-like. Yeah, thumb-like. Um, but this was more to do with a cricket incident where he was batting and the bowler hit him right in the Jets crackers. And did one he of not his, have one of those box things? He did, but I believe it sort of was moving so fast that it had high impact. Mm-hmm. Um, one of his nuts. Right? <laughs> avocado. Do you issue. call it an avocado? No, well, it swelled up so big. Um, to the size of an avocado? Mm, his left nut was the size of an avocado. Like an avocado that you can buy three for five dollars or one of the big house? Yeah, uh, house avocado. Mm. Um, it was huge and um, it still is. So he's a bit lopsided. He swings a bit on the left. Mm. Um, and that is one of the small details about Matt DeGroote. It certainly doesn't define his work here. Um, this special episode of the podcast celebrates swollen testicles and Matt DeGroote. Take it away. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. A bit disappointed with Kate yesterday, and Kate, oh. if you are listening on the way into work this morning, I, I'm the funeral guy. I'm the one that speaks about death on this show. Um, yeah, I, I've yeah. said to you guys, we've got to be up and honest about this, and let's talk about what you want when you go, yeah. because I don't, I don't think we should be afraid of it, you know what I mean? We need to embrace it. Celebrate it. You know, over the years, we've had some amazing stories, haven't we? we have You're talking about the death unbelie- of Matt DeGroot today? Well, yeah, that is a tough one. And Tommy. Tommy's last day as well. So yeah. we'll say goodbye to Tommy Thanks, at some guys. stage. Thanks, Miss Tim. You. Miss you. But I, over the years, we've had some amazing stories. We spoke about the man over in Belgium who faked his own death um, just because he wasn't getting much love from some of his relatives and then rocked up in a helicopter yeah. to the funeral and got out and said, I'm still here, guys. Why don't, why don't you come and see me a bit more? They weren't too happy with that one. Um, what about the one... Do you remember this one? Where, um, I mean, the audio is pretty full on here when they were lowering the guy six feet under and right up the top there, something went wrong and something broke and then all of a sudden he went tumbling down into the grave. Have a listen to this. That's the, that's oh. the way he wanted it. No, he, no, that's he the didn't. way he wanted it. I mean, it was a little bit like that old HBF ad. My head went that way and my legs went that way. <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile got me. <laughs> so the ones that I want to I want to talk about as well is the way that you want to be viewed, the way that you want to go out. Um, I think they're the best ones. Actually, Jess, what we might do next is. Um, we might do the soccer one. The young fella who passed away, but geez, he loved having a kick at the football. Yeah. And was pretty good at penalties as well. And so they decided to, at his funeral, mm-hmm. um, in his coffin, just wheel him out one more time around the penalty goal. Like and one of coffin. his mates, <laughs> yeah, one of, the, one of his mates set up the ball, kicked mm. the ball into the coffin, and you wouldn't believe it, he scored a goal. Have a listen to this. Scores straight off the cliff and straight off the woodwork of the box. Zoom. Oh, he's done. No. Ronaldo. The Ronaldo Whipley. Um, this is the, okay, this is, I'm going to go straight to the last one now, Jess. This is the one I want to talk about because... What's this one? A guy, over, a guy over in the States loves the strong ass. He loves getting in the gym. And don't we all? Like, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. You go... Okay. It's just a good place just to switch off, to get away, and you don't have to worry about your family. Unfortunately, he's passed away, had a few complications. So he's decided... 
decided, I'm going to put this video up on the screen. He's decided, well, the family's decided, because he loved his weight so much, why don't we have one last viewing of him <laughs> doing the bench press? <laughs> so he's on the bench. His arms are stuck on the bar as if he's about to lift them up. But I love that they've put gloves on his hands, so they've probably glued his hands to the bar, to the barbell, and he's lying on the bench, dead. So so the people viewing, you can go past, you can squat him, you can help him out one last yeah, time. Yeah, Get that squatting. last one up. Come on, Dave, you can do this. Mate, if he doesn't you lift can... that weight, it'll fall and kill him. Oh, my God. Can, can I just say, for someone who has just passed as well, still in great nick, he's in really, really good nick. I mean, he's, in, he's now set for rapid weight loss and um, his muscles. I mean, if he needs leg day. Look, I reckon his legs have started to go already. He needs to get there on that. Thursday for leg day. He's got a jar of creatine next to him. He's in. He's he's gone to his perfect place. You know what I mean? He'll go knocking on the pearly on the pearly gates, just saying, "Can somebody spot me? I'm going for 120." <laughs> what if you could book your hotel now and choose to pay when you get there? With thousands of flexible booking options in select stays, you're only a what if away from your next holiday. Book on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? The last show ever. For a guy by the name of Matt DeGroot. Yeah, I mean, last of this show. You know, it's not the retirement of career. It's not the end of going to London, do some radio there. Oh, yeah, what are you then, lined up? Um, look, nothing, nothing sort of, at this nothing hard yeah. at this time. I know what you're saying. It's important to say this is just the end of this chapter. This chapter. The, but yeah. the beginning of something else. Yeah. I know when I left Home and Away, everyone kept saying, oh, it's, your, it's see, you, see you later. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, but Home and, and then, Away was a successful career. Yeah, and then I ended up here. <laughs> yeah. And now you're winning. Could we have an Olympic correspondent next year at Paris oh. in Matt de Groot? If you're yes. over there, you're, you're in London, mate, the gateway to Europe. Because the key to all great resignations is actually then just coming back a week later on sort of a freelance contract and getting I'll about get triple more. what you did when you were full time. Not a bad angle, sir. Well played. <laughs> but, I mean, how long have you been on this show? About ten, a year? Ten, ten, and ten, a half. ten and a half. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. Wonderful years where nothing has gone wrong and it has been step forward after step forward. Nothing but highlights yeah. for me. Let's enjoy three minutes of them. <laughs> Matt DeGroos. Oh. Hello, mate. How does one sum up a decade-long career in a very short montage? Well, let's divide it into three different categories. Category one, the stitch-ups. Hi, I'm Fitzy and Whippers newsreader Matt DeGroos, and I am the victim of stitch-ups. I hate this show. He started his time on the show with a stitch-up. Congratulations, mate. We've got your stuff. In which the guys moved all of his furniture out of his apartment and on to Manly Wharf. This is all my furniture. Hey, the apartment's got a real El Fresco feel to it. <laughs> and then the stitch-ups just kind of continued for about 10 years. From getting his car towed... Hey, it's a private car park, you can't do that. We've already got it on the truck, we've got to take it. ...to convincing him he had a secret love child. Matt, take responsibility. Like, f- hell, take responsibility. I'm going to take responsibility for no. a child. <laughs> Sure. And let's not forget that Whipper dropped his wedding cake. You were getting ready. We wandered up to the front door to hand the cake over because we had to drop it off. Thank you, mate. I trip on the stairs. Oh. And the cake smashes to the ground. Not all of the stitch-ups were super high effort, though. Do not put Matty DeGroot <laughs> off by holding up a photo of his mother while he's reading the news. Over and then you're morning. making it, you're kissing her while that he's that reading the news. <laughs> and the guys quickly figured out that if you tell Matt DeGroote that he might be on TV, he'll do almost anything. If you were asked for a song for your wife, what would it be? Like when we organised a fake audition for him for the TV show Kiss Bang Love. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. Which leads me to the ultimate Matt DeGroote stitch-up, the one that was so good uh, that we've been banned from ever playing it. Snitch. If you want to know what happened... Just ask him. The same. Oh, I hate you so much! And here's category two, the stunts. I'm not demanding, but I'm in demand. There it is! Since MDG doesn't have any shame... It looks tired. Call of Duty lasts forever. <laughs> he's ended up doing all sorts of stuff for the show. Like trying to sneak onto the set of Thor dressed like Chris Hemsworth. I'm a uh, body double for Chris. Oh, you know, there's more security guards again. I'm just going <laughs> to backward roll out of here, guys. <laughs> and they somehow got a bunch of flowers into the hands of Meghan Markle. Megan! Beautiful flowers! 
You can't give flowers that big to my wife. <laughs> Which got him international headlines. So international. Where is this going around the world? The footage was on Entertainment Tonight. News unit for the Aussie Breakfast Show, Fitzy and Whipper. TMZ. The BBC Radio. Presented his wife with a bouquet. The photo has more likes than my engagement photo. So. <laughs> he made out with an 80-year-old grandma on live radio. Oh, okay, oh okay. God. The lips have met. That's really passionate at this stage. Just but such a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> And it's truly amazing that the only injury that he's managed to sustain on air is getting his ribs broken by Paul Gallen. Gallen, you've got five seconds. Five. Oh, 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 some big life moments on air as well. Like getting married to the wonderful Bronte and having a child. Forget Katy Perry and her baby blues. Because Bronte is pregnant and that's the major news! And even got himself a mention at the ARIA Awards. Uh, I've got some other people to thank. Uh, My mate Matt DeGroot. So let's finish with the longest running Matt DeGroot joke on the show. Sung by Fitzy. And my friend said I know you love her but it's your cousin mate. That's really creepy. Put your phone What's your family gonna say? Let her go. It's incestual. <laughs> oh, such oh, a disappointing way to finish. Yeah. Such a disappointing <laughs> way. As, as you're wearing a Dean Lewis t shirt. I, know. I um, look, that really does bring back a lot of memories and, and sort of drives him why I'm leaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, really does. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We come to a very special moment because it'll be the last riddle time for the year. Now, traditionally, this means, Fitzy, you fall asleep. But I will ask you to maintain your conscience. Come on, consciousness. Consciousness. Get up and about, Fitz. Come on. Come on, mate. You might even get one here. Go wild, everybody. MDG, your last riddle time for the history of riddle time. I'll just play online along with our listeners. Oh, all the way from the UK. Here we go. An old grandfather sat in the corner of the room without legs to just his arms. Clock. Kate Ritchie, she's not in a mother. She's on to us. I mean, I couldn't even get the riddle out, guys. I mean, it's a classic, is it it not? Oh, we laughed. Uh. (laughs) Whack two hands and a face on this one. What? It's a clock. Jenny works for a grocery store. She only weighed 2.6 kilos when she was born, but now 18 and 162. What does she weigh? 18 and 162. 162 centimetres. Ah. What does she weigh? Jenny works at her grocery store. She only weighed 2.6 kilos when she was born. Now she's 18 and 162. What does she weigh? The fruit? Kate Ritchie. Oh, she good. It's her job, guys. Yes. Do you get yeah. it? Do you want me yes. talk, to talk you, you through it? You were on a roll last week oh as well. My God. Oh, it's well done, Christmas. Kate. I love what riddles. What a great way to finish off the year, Kate. Well I know. Do done. I get a prize well or well, something? Well, you might get 20% off the code word today, MDG, oh. yeah. as we celebrate the big rig. <laughs> the far too You're also in the running for Kate's com. sweet seats. Good oh luck. Have your phone on today, Kate. Here we go, guys. <laughs> When the fire alarm sounded on the 10th storey building where he works, Chris didn't bother heading to the stairs, and in his panic, he jumped straight out the nearest window. How did he survive? He wasn't on the 10th floor. He was already on the ground level. Matt DeGroote! Oh! Oh! Yes! He's not here to muck around, the big guy. Just get one game. How just, does that just feel? One point, one point. Mandy and mascot for the last riddle time of 2023. Oh, last one. Here we go. In the wind, I swear, yet hide the light of day. Start again, Mandy, in English, please. Oh, oh. oh sorry. Oh. Here we go. In the wind, I swear, yet hide the light of day. I'm not a book, but you may scroll, for I am yours to control. Come I. Tommy. Tommy. Tom What's I? the end? The what am I? Oh, oh what am I? Um, oh, God. Is there like a leaf? Oh. Um, In the uh, wind I stay. Uh, Something about the uh, night of day. Hiding yeah, hiding the light. Is it a shadow? Control. No. Could you give us a, uh, again, Mandy, please? In the wind I swear. Swear. Yet hide the light of day. I'm not a book, but you may scroll. For I am yours to control. What am I? A mobile phone. 
It's not no. tinder. Are you like an umbrella or something? Like a, 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 a sun protector or something? No. Uh, the moon? No. What is no. scroll? Is it something scroll. that you'd have in your house, Mandy? Yes, it is, Tom. What do you got, Tom? Well it's not a do calendar, it. is it? Bring it home. I'm thinking. Oh. Bring it home. Perhaps. A door? A, a curtain? Is it curtain? Ah! Yeah! Yeah! When it comes to curtains, Tommy yeah, is all over. He loves Mandy. a good kid. Good we, on you, Mandy. We thank you for <laughs> well 2023, Tom. Mandy. You're beautiful. We love you. Oh, love you. Bye. I'm going to miss you guys. Oh. Bye, Mandy. Oh, bye. bye. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Go. 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 Uh-oh. Taylor Swift. Taylor about you. Kate Ritchie's Sweet Seats. This is unreal. See me live with Nova. Oh. So who'd you who'd you boot out of the suite? That's what we want no. to know because you found you found another two seats. Well, this is what I have learnt through the course of um, the suite seats and going to see Taylor live in action when she comes out next year. I think there's less than seventy days now. I, I've ve- learnt very quickly that when Tommy says there are only a certain amount of seats or yep. tickets, <laughs> he's lying. He's lying. Absolutely. He's always been a liar. He's yeah. lying. He's Terrible. like he's like the Hansel and Gretel yeah. of. Um, of the radio world just dropping crumbs. Isn't he? Awful. Criminal. So if, it, you, if you if you ever run into Tom Ivey oh, on the street, God. just shake, oh, like shake the tree, <laughs> shake him and tickets yeah. fall out. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a human ticket machine. Well, it's a perfect way to the end of the year. Of course, today's our last show. Two tickets to the suite. Alongside me, um, wow. Taylor Taylor Swift's oh. Eras Tour. Not everyone could get tickets and not everyone got them the second time nope. around either. The amount of calls we've had, the, ma- the amount of excitement around it. Um, but now is actually the time to call one lucky person oh and, and give them is it the final two seats to Who the knows? suite? Yeah, quite, us, quite possibly. For Kate. today. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Kate, no. Okay, so for anyone that got on the show this week, if you are listening right now, have your phone very close because Kate, you're taking over right now. This is your call. Okay, look, let's put the number in. Put the now. number in. Can you do that for me, Jess? Okay, here we go. Good luck, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi, Leon. Is, is that Leona? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can. It's, 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 Ka- <laughs> it's Kate Ritchie calling from Fitzy and Whippa. Ah! Have I won? <laughs> would you like to win? Oh, I would love to win for my two girls. They're just, I'm just so one of them to go, especially for my Michaela. Okay, well, guess what? Michaela what? is going. You've got ah! two tickets. The last... Yeah! Oh, oh, Leona, how oh. hard have you tried to get these tickets? I've tried so hard. We tried to buy them. We tried to. We went on Marketplace. We tried Melbourne, everywhere. And then Michaela, she just got scammed buying tickets and <sighs> she was so upset because she wanted to buy them for her sister for Christmas. Oh. And I just... <laughs> And I just kept trying, and I just thought, yeah, this is it. This is my turn. And I thought, I'm going to win these, and I have. You have. You've, <laughs> you, you've manifested the tickets. And not only do you have two tickets that you've bought online, you have two tickets to the suite. Oh, I can't believe it. Le- <laughs> Leona, amazing. how much did your daughter lose by being scammed? I- $800. Oh, my God. Oh, and um, I just, wait. it broke her heart, and I just, I gave her the money back because I just thought I can't let her be like that because she's yeah. young, married, just had her first baby, and I just thought... Wait, where where, where to, is she at the moment, Michaela? She's on, um, Michaela's on holidays in um, New, Ze- uh, New Zealand because her husband... Um, an air traffic control, and he's been was away for three months, and so she was on her own with the hey. new baby. Do, <laughs> and he's Tommy, taken can a we, two can, week trip. Yeah, can got, we ring Michaela? Yeah. We've got to ring Michaela. I've got her number here. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so Leo, Leona, actually, do you know yeah. what, Kate? Do you want to take the, you take the call and you tell Michaela? Can do you, you want tell me to? What would you like to tell her, Leona? <laughs> You can. She would just be over the moon. Does she, does she know you're in the running? Does she know yeah. that we could have called you today? Okay, well, let's get her on the line now and I'll let her know that you, you. Mum's, mum's got the two tickets for you. Oh, this is good. Here we go. Hello. 
Hi, Michaela. Uh, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Um, it's... I was listening to Mum. Oh, you've been listening to <laughs> Mum already. You had your fingers crossed for the tickets yeah, this morning. Well, I, I'm here to tell you that your mum has done the most amazing thing in the lead up to Christmas. We know you got scammed for Taylor Swift tickets. She now has won you two tickets into the suite wow. for February Yay! to see Taylor Swift live. Oh, how good a mum. <laughs> She's on the line if you want to say thank you. Oh, thank you, Mum. Anything for you. Anything for you. I love you so much. You're in the medicine. She'll be so excited. I know. I'm so happy to be for you. I can't oh. believe the power of Taylor Swift tickets. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> do we, do we, we need to call you... Madison now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Well, Michaela, enjoy your trip over there. I know, I know you're over there for your husband's work, but you are going along with your sister to Taylor Swift and you're in Kate's suite. You've got food, drink. You, you've got the best place. Thank you so, so much. It's going to be well so done. great. We are going to have a wonderful time. I hope you have a lovely Christmas. You've got a brand new baby. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's just got eight months. Yeah. Oh, that is sensational. Well, you're going to have to find a babysitter. I'm sure Mum will put a hand up for I that night. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on you, Mum. for my little Ellery. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Well done, guys. Leona, Thank you. Thank you. Michaela. Thank you. That is beautiful, Madison. isn't it? Madison. <laughs> Maddie and the baby. Merry it's Christmas. Just, uh, what, Tommy, can we come back and ring the rest of the family? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, get the, family members. I'll get the white pages out, okay. guys. Uncle Here Steve, <laughs> Gary, Cousin Shane. We'll call them all. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. This morning, it's our final wrap-up of the week for the year, and we thought, no, we don't need a guest this morning because it's Maddie de Groot's last show today. Mm. And we just thought, why don't we tee off and roast him for yeah. 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friday. Don't know how much that web away. Ask him later on at the buffet. Oh! It is your day today, mate. So do you want to rap first or do you want us to rap first? I will go first. Okay. Oh, oh my yes. goodness. I will go first. Go, Matt. Come and on. Kate, you know, because you don't rap, I'm not going to sledge you because you can't fight back. So this okay. is just... Oh, well, I can fight back and I think you might be scared. So... Okay, mate. Come probably on. best you leave me out. I've... <laughs> Sit to the side. All right. I'll start with Tommy and your quirky brain and your smutty one-liners over French champagne as the show's EP. You do copper whack, but you lead our charge to the front of the pack. So my only question, and it's not a crack, is why are we still behind Kyle and Jack? Oh! It's been 10 years. It's actually it's right. to Fitzy. He's swinging. My man. Raps are your thing, your holy grail. Compared to you, I'm very pale. But I'm glad I'm done as it's getting stale. Rhyming five on debut or your big brother tail. <laughs> Jokes that aren't getting any younger, but won't stop you talking about Port in a Lunga. Oh! Whipfly. There we oh, go. Let's go. I love you. you. I love you. Yeah, I love you, buddy. Let's get a bottle of Granger and drive a Ranger. If what? you live in the West, you're probably a stranger. <laughs> Spent most of the show on the stock exchanger and win five grand. Not even a week changer. <laughs> <laughs> You know with your gags, I'm always there Hyping you up with your full head of hair And I want you to know whoever sits in my chair My hand over note just reads Yeah, yeah! Oh! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm heading to London via Paris So this is the last time I'll say rubbish, Yaris No more M5 or Korean nosedive All these fake laughs are in the archive oh! Charge your glasses, get off the floor, because this traffic pig is heading out the door. Oh! Oh! Gee, gee, that was really good. Make a oh, make pig. Hey, well done. You were shaking too. You were holding your sheet shaking. I was. Well done, buddy. That was really good. Do you want me to go first? You go first. Oh, no. Let's cook him. Come on, let's do this. He's dead. <laughs> 
Here we go, Ryan James. I do love this rap. Roast him. A decade ago, the man strolled in, oozing confidence with belief thrown in. There were looks of shock, looks of cringe. I just saw a pig with a tinge of ginge. Oh! Beneath the front, there was a brain ready to burst like a water main. Huh? His Tinder bio was extremely graphic, but he used his power in the realm of traffic. <laughs> Reliability question, and to be fair, his best traffic breaks when he's not there. Oh. Journalist at heart, and he would chase, but at his core, he was more cut and paste. What? We've stitched him up, oh. we've sent him out. He's blown up more than my grandpa's gout. Oh. I love his honesty, I love his cousin, because we roasted him more than my meal I oven. Oh. We love you, Matty. I can't deny you've grown on us slowly like an old bonsai. I'd love to have a beer like I did with Duncan, and also because you got a spare bed if I come to London. Oh. I'm not going to mention that, mate. I'm not going to lie on myself. Your eyebrows. Your eyebrows. And now, it's sad. And now the end is near. MDG is leaving, so the party is here. No, it's not that we're saying get out the door. It's what the company is saying. Get out the door. <laughs> no, you haven't been pushed. You're just chasing a dream. But after nine here at Nova, you know where to be seen. I'll never forget when you called me a whale. You called me worse when you caught me blowing a gale. What's we're going to miss you, Matt. We're going to miss you, buddy. There ain't no one that's so strangely funny. Ten years so strong and ten years so wrong. That's why we're going out singing this song. MDG, oh. the traffic pig. MDG. Oh, Love you, buddy. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. That was good. Oh, my God. Is it? I mean, do we have a winner in this rap with Kate Ritchie or is Matt, De- Matt DeGroote just the winner all round? Kate, remember? Well, I mom. mean, I don't know. Is he the winner? He's not used to winning on this show. But I think today he's the one leaving. So, MDG. Yeah, thank you, Kate. Well done, mate. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. As we say a farewell and thank you to Matt DeGroote. It is weird to actually be at this point. We've been talking about it for a long time, about three years now. It's really been dragged out. Mm. But I I have loved it and I will be around. We'll be around next week on Smallsy and whatnot, but it's the last of this show. Um, And I have asked Tom for the possibility. I know radio is very time conscious, so I'll try to keep it brief, but the opportunity to just say thank you, if that's all right, Tommy. Uh, Yes, approved. Approved, great. (laughs) Go ahead. And as it's live, it can't be edited, which is fantastic. Right, okay. Uh, Okay. Not a word of it. Oh, no. Um, Okay. What do you got, big guy? Um, This has been a dream come true. To be part of a Sydney radio breakfast show is something that when you set out, you aspire to do. To be part of it for 10 years is, I think, for all of us, beyond Mm. your wildest imagination. Uh, And for the opportunities and the moments that it has created, they have been extraordinary. Uh, And they are only, however, possible for being part of a show on a station like Nova that has a reputation and the longevity and the goodwill that this one does, which is a credit to everyone on this show, you all, everyone behind the scenes. Um, People like to be part of this show because as best as I can see, it just makes people feel good. And in a world where there is ever-present uncertainty, without overstating radio on what we do, uh, to be able to offer a place where people can turn to, to bring a smile or distract, uh, or to just feel some connection has been really special. Uh, It's also how I've felt being a part of it. Uh, For 10 years, I've had to add things to my bucket list to just cross them off because the opportunities have been so wild. Reading the news from the top of the Harbour Bridge, insane. Meeting Harry. Yep. Reading the news in a fighter plane, at the snow, in an ice bath, driving fast cars, (laughs) jumping out of aeroplanes. Like, it is insane, the things you get to do. Reading the news to the Anchorman cast, Will Farrell and the like, dressed as Ron Burgundy. You don't conceptualise doing these things until you're part of a show like this and then it happens and it's amazing and I hope for as much as it was possible I've been able to share those moments with you and for that I wanted to say thank you and some thank yous firstly to you for listening to me Uh, who knew people could be so connected to someone who just tells them it's busy on the M5 and their run to work is stuffed every day but for some reason people seem to have enjoyed it Uh, and I've loved meeting everyone throughout the entire process except maybe those who shout out Traffic Pig in Cronulla more (laughs) still very funny tuck your ears into your cap (laughs) Um, but uh, I have met so many people through this show specifically and many of them are great friends Uh, And thank you. Uh, Secondly, I really want to publicly acknowledge Sarah McGilvray. Yep. Says, um, whether it was working on this show, 
Legends Hour, Saturday morning with Matty J, summer breakfast, Sunday night, uh, says you have provided the brightest spark of my time at Nova. I, I love you. Um, you didn't get the chance to have this farewell and be told by listeners that you are as spectacular as you are. So allow me to do that on their behalf. You're magnificent. As a friend, a heart, and of course a radio talent, I have loved working alongside you and I hope we can again. Well said, buddy. To everyone in the newsroom, it is an amazing group of people. It is the measure by which all other newsrooms are compared and I have valued working with them. Brendan Taylor, who hired me, CHY, birthplace of champs, and all the Pete's in this building, thank you for putting up with all my many, many, (laughs) many attempts to destabilise the company. Um, To Bronte, my wife. I met you working in this building and you have built a career that is now going to see you conquer the world. Uh, It's not lost on me that the main question that I I get asked and she gets asked is, but what's Matt going to do when we go over there? Um, As if just going to support you and the family didn't make sense or wasn't enough for the guy. You know, well, what's what's the man going to do? I'm not sure that's the response that she would have gotten if it was the other way around, but it is absolutely enough to be able to travel alongside you and help our family and you live your dream is perfect and you will be amazing Uh, and of course finally you guys um fitz whip tommy kate for the last year (laughs) that's all right (laughs) we didn't know each other when we started and that's a big gamble for you guys to take to invite me into your show I realised pretty quickly that if I didn't take myself too seriously, it was an open book, overshared and said outrageous things, it was going to be okay. Uh, And it was. As I've said to everyone who has asked about what you're like in real life or the unrelenting stitch-ups and how I put up with all of it, um, the most fun you can have with your mates is making their life a misery. I think that's how we genuinely show (laughs) that we love and that we care. Welcome to Australia. Yeah. And... At the core of that is trust. Um, I trust you guys. You trust that I won't let your show down. And for the last 10 years, it has been unbelievable. Uh, It's not the norm that a newsreader gets the freedom to be involved in a show like this. And that's a credit to you guys for letting me be a part of it in a way that has allowed my career to grow as well. All of the hosting, the TV, the sports stuff with the Swans and the Sixers, that all comes because you guys have opened this show to me and not stamped down on potential and opportunity which so many other stations have had that experience it's a credit to you guys and the personality types that you are um, we have been through tough times you've created some tough times you've invited me into your lives your families and you have been there all of the time it has been the best thank you for being good decent deeply immature but wonderful mates. Thank you, Matt. And I will miss you. I love you guys. I am excited for someone else to have this chance. Congratulations on more than 10 years and the, the years that will continue. It has been a privilege and an honour. Thank you. Matty DeGroote. Oh, wow. Well said, Matty. That is beautiful. Magnificent, buddy. It's, it's, so it's, and it is funny. Like uh, People are typecast into, you know, the newsreader role or the traffic role. People are typecast into that. And you know what? At most stations, that's all they do. Yeah. But you are, you have, and we, we joke about the traffic pig and stuff now, but you are a character. <laughs> and this is the thing. I, watching you in front of 30,000 people at the SCG when there's a Swans game on, I, I, I there, was a, there was a proud moment for me, MDG, where it's just, you're not just the traffic guy anymore. Like, you really... And and this is what we love about you, mate. You, you, you've brought such a, an amazing personality to this show. Thanks, mate. And we are going to miss you dearly. So thank you for everything, mate. Thank yeah. you, mate. I think um, to know Maddie DeGroote is to love Maddie DeGroote. I know when you first started on the show, and similar to your mum, Heather, making a comment the other day, Kate, <laughs> I'm not joking, my mum rang and said, who's Matt DeGroote? Because I love his voice and I want more of him. And I went, you can sit right back down, mum. She got plenty more. Um, <laughs> but MVG, more than that. she bargained. <laughs> and we're so excited to see what you need, do next. Next, what you knew, what you knew, what you knew <laughs> next. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of nude at the start there of the show. <laughs> well. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. To our producing team here at Nova, thank you so much, guys. It's been a massive year, 2023, and we've always said that the and in Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is the team behind us, and we can't do it without oh. you. So thank you to everyone thank involved you, in the show. Okay. Um, and also another lady that we want to thank so much for her contribution to this show is the magnificent Sarah McGilvray. Um, we know how much we love that lady, um, and it has been a very tough year. But Sarah, we want to thank 
thank you so much for everything that you've done on this show. Maddie DeGroot said some beautiful words yeah. uh, about Sarah before, and um, we just want to say how much you mean to us, and thank you for everything you contributed to the show as well, yep. Sarah. But Sarah's still it's working. It's a sad day today. Over. Enjoy the rest of the year. Have a, a magnificent Christmas, yeah. everyone. Thanks, fellas. On Good on you, no Kate. Worries. Good to have you part of the show for oh, the last six you. months or so. It's been a treat. fighting me back next year? We don't know at this stage. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hold tight for that big announcement. Right. Will we have more Taylor Swift tickets? <laughs> Will Kate Ritchie be back on air? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Enjoy uh, your in Christmas. Bye! Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.